Hang Up on St. Thomas, I thought it was fabulous because I lived a little distance away from the, well, a little distance from the pier, the village. And I could walk to church when I was a big girl. I could walk down Demery Road and go to the church. And when I went to the church, then I would walk back home, you know, by myself. <laughs> Cars, it wasn't much traffic. It was just great. Just really, really great. Got a chance to play with all the kids in the neighborhood. Um, there was this white family that lived across from me. I used to go over there, eat, play, have all kind of fun. Then they would come over and eat, play, and it was like, um, I have like, I can't I tell you exactly. I think it's um, Dimry Circle, Dimry Place. I can't think of the name of it right now, but anyway, it was, that was my whole little area. My little shanty house sat in the middle of it. And so I could go all the way to the back, still have plenty of room up front, go all the way to the front and right down Jim Road. Tell us about Hazel's. You like Hazel's. I do like Hazel's. Hazel was a cousin, actually. And she and my mom grew up together. Hazel, she worked at the um, shipyard. And when Hazel, the shipyard closed down, Hazel wanted very much to own her own business. So she wanted a restaurant. She asked her two sisters and her brother and her husband to help. Yes, so they built, they actually built that restaurant. And she had an opening out of sight. On the weekends, they would do seafood outside, which was fried fish, boiled crabs, oyster rolls, clam bake. It was really nice. But then she also sold a little beer. I think that was on the side. I don't think she ever had a license. <laughs> and of course, people that came to St. Simon's, African Americans, they would buy her food. Because Hazel was a great cook, you know what I mean? She could take the soup bones and make great soup, and she cooked that rice. And of course, you know, as an African American, we eat a lot of rice. And so she would do these things, and she can really, I mean, she really did good. Fried chicken, pork chops, and of course, every Saturday was almost fish night or fish day. And how about those penny cookies? <laughs> that was one of my things. I used to like those penny cookies. And you know what? The more and more I think, it was the coconut. It had a little coconut in it. The little penny cookies. Oh, they are good. They don't sell them anymore. They should. I, <laughs> I can't find them in the grocery store anymore. But they were delicious. Now tell us about the Sea Island um, Heritage Festival. Did you do in June? It's due in June, July 2nd, and it's a one-day affair. We had to switch from the two days. Is it June or July 2nd? No, June. June, okay. June 2nd, and it's a one-day thing, and it, we're going to probably start about 11 o'clock, and we're going to probably be there until about 7. We start shutting down really about 6.30, but, and we have... A lot of great people coming to sing. A lot of smoked mullet, um, old fashioned roasting of the mullet and the, um, the um, barbecue, the way, way we cook barbecue, and different arts and crafts. And probably a lot of stories. <laughs> you have plenty of stories. Yes, yes, yes. That we plan to bring, we want to bring someone in to do some of the stories. Since uh, Emory and I do them all the time, <laughs> it's good to have someone else. And then tell us about the um, tours that you do. <sighs> the tours, I love the tours, okay, because it gets, you get a, individualized um, 
story about St. Simon's. Um, we go down, well, we, we hit all the little spots that maybe you would not hit on a trolley tour and about the fishing and where people used to come in the 40s and the 50s to ask the African-American men to take them out on boats to fish and catch fish. Same thing with hunting. Um, we go by Evo Landing, and we talk about the different neighborhoods. Um, we talk about, there was another school. There were several schools on St. Simon's, but the other school during my time was down on South End. And so I take you by there, it's now a church, but I take you by there so that you can see that. Um, we go to the village and we talk about Neptune Smalls. I show you where his granddaughter lived and his great granddaughter lived. I show you the park that I played in, Jim Brown's house. Several other little things that really, if you didn't know about, you would never guess that it ever happened because it has been destroyed or taken away. Like Mr. Proctor, Willis Proctor. He was a man who worked for Rockefeller. He was Rockefeller manservant over on Jacob. And he had a brother named Mr. Enoch. And Mr. Enoch used to swim across the channel to go to um, Jacob to see uh, Mr. Willis. And whatever, bring back goods or whatever. And he would swim it back. Now that's a long swim, and it's a deep swim, but he used to do it all the time. But then Willis came over here, and he made him a little shop, which now, I don't know what it's called, but it's, it's right there off of Demery, on South End. And he used to sell everything, bread, flour, little meat, Bologna. Oh, girl, that bologna was delicious. I don't even like bologna anymore. But yeah, bologna, spice ham. Um, you know, little things, things that rice, little things that we would need, and we didn't have to go to Brunswick to buy it. And that, uh, that's basically my tour. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're more than welcome. I'm Emory Rooks. I was a student here in the early 50s, from first to third grade. Living on St. Simon has been a, an experience. It was a rural area with dirt roads, limited cars, and limited housing at that time. As time progressed, the area became more developed with more houses and more cars, more congestion. But we've had a very good life on St. Simon. We had the beach to, to uh, go in, a lot of fishing, and a lot of uh, wildlife on the air at that time. So nothing had actually changed the point where we couldn't enjoy ourselves for being on St. Simon. What's one of your favorite things to do when you were a kid? Fishing. We enjoy fishing here. It was beautiful. Clean water and a lot of, plenty, lot of fish and plenty of wildlife here. Where's your favorite fishing spot? Do you want to tell us? It was in uh, Federica River at that time. But during the years, the, the, the landscape has changed, and in doing so, the fishing location has changed. And any secret fishing location you want to share now? Those, those areas have now been, been destroyed by, by the last hurricanes came, came through. So it always changes? Yes, everything has changed since then.